today we're talking about all the things we didn't do that could have made us a better photographer. I can't believe how often my brain goes through these stupid loops thinking about all the things I didn't do that could have made me a better photographer. Today, reading was on top of the list. I was listening to a podcast and this guy was talking about how well read he is on certain subjects but not others, and maybe he should have actually read more about some of these other subjects, and then he'd be better at what he did. And I started thinking about that, how I'm a really bad reader. Like reading is not a skill I picked up when I was young. I struggle with that. And maybe I would have been a better photographer if I was a better reader. And the list begins. If only I'd gone to university. If only I didn't have a full-time job. If only the kids were older. If only I had that new lens. If only I had that old lens. If only I was a billionaire. My personal favorite though is if only I was six inches taller, because in truth, I would be a better photographer if I was taller. There's no doubt about it. There's really only two kind of if only cases that we're talking about. It's better gear and better time. And one of these is actually more accurate than the other. Spending time on your craft is the best way to get better at it. It really, really is. The best thing you can do to improve your photography is just go out and shoot more. Spend more time out there doing it. For most people, spending more time on their photography is actually the biggest hurdle. That's the bit that's really genuinely getting in their way. Most people have families and jobs and responsibilities. I think normal people fill their lives with social connections and obligations, and they're part of something much bigger than themselves. They rarely have time to devote to their own pursuits. That's why artists are often such quirky, lovely people in my view, because they're not normal people at all. They're people who often find that they don't fit into society so neatly. And as a consequence, they might find they do have a little bit of time to explore more esoteric forms of expression, like photography. Time is a luxury. Having time is an absolute luxury. Not just any kind of time, but quality time. Time with a clear head and the capacity to ignore everything else in the world and just concentrate on something creative that you're trying to do. I can't get much creative done when my accountant is hassling me to sort out a tax filing error. Like I just, I can't think, I can't get my creative brain to stay on one track. Or if there's a client shoot booked for the afternoon, I'm not likely to have clear headspace in the morning in order to do my best creative work. Quality time is a luxury. That's also why one bad client can make a huge impact on everything you do. The ones who stuff you around or get whiny about the prices you're charging or commission a bunch of work and then they don't deliver on their half of the project and everything turns to shit. Those clients, they are toxic. You need to stay away from them. They take whatever creative energy you have and they will crush it. Finding quality time is difficult to bring into your life and bring into your photography. That's why when you do something like book on a photography tour, it's a great way to step forward because now you're in a space that's all about you and your photographer for days or weeks. It's a luxury. Just getting away from your family can be a huge factor. Shelley and I run a food photography workshop once a year, mainly aimed at professionals who want to step sideways, or restaurant owners, or anyone working in social media of any form, really. It's only four days, but it is intense. Shelley and I are exhausted by the end of it. We need a week off before we can do any other client work. On one occasion, we had a lady get really cranky at us because she wanted to book onto the trip, but she said she needed to drive home each night and take care of her kids. She couldn't stay at the farmhouse where we were running the workshop. We tried to explain to her that we didn't think that this was a good idea because that time you're spending in the farmhouse with everybody else, that's really, really critical time. The conversations you're having are really valuable. The conversations don't stop just because the sun goes down. Not only that, but you need to be fully present in this experience. You need to be 100% focused on what you're doing and what you're trying to learn and what you can extract out of that workshop experience. 
Otherwise, you're wasting your time. The minute you go home, the minute you step back into your daily life, you're getting pulled 10 ways from Sunday. Anything you had done an hour before is just zap. It's gone out of your brain. You're never going to retain that information. So there's a reason we designed these workshops as an escape from daily life so that you can immerse yourself and give yourself some quality time. Unfortunately, she didn't like that reply. Her response wasn't great. She felt that we were getting in the way of her trying to achieve what she was trying to do, which was not what we were trying to say. But it raises the point that we often feel that someone else is getting in our way. We feel that there are roadblocks that are preventing us from being the best photographers we can be. And sometimes that does actually happen. This is a genuine problem. We don't all have the economic freedom just to do a workshop. We don't have the economic freedom to change our career or to leave the job that we're in right now so that we can go and pursue something else down the road that we think might be more rewarding. Sometimes we may not be living in an emotionally supportive environment where we get a chance to go chase our dream career. Reality genuinely does get in the way sometimes. In my case, I couldn't afford to go to university when I left high school. I had to get a job instead. It was another seven years of part-time study before I completed my degree. And by that time, I'd almost figured out that I was already in the wrong career because it wasn't photography. In a strange way, taking the long way round may have actually benefited me immensely. I learned so much from working with some great people in my science career and I learned how to teach myself. I learned that if there's something you don't know today, you can just go out and learn it tomorrow. Anything is possible. That's what science taught me. Plus, I was also more aware of how the world in general works by that time, so that when I went freelance, I was a little bit more prepared for what I was getting into. It's possible my lack of access to study when I was a younger person was not so much as a roadblock, but more of just being steered onto a better path. This week, I have been reminded that sometimes roadblocks can be an absolute blessing. You may not feel that way at the time. You may feel the exact opposite, as though you're watching a world of possibilities get flushed down the drain. But years later, it can look really different. This year, I made a change to how I run my photography tours, and I've decided I'll be spending more time teaching photography on board an expedition ship, and a little less time managing the logistics and the difficult stuff on my regular tours. The net result of this change is that I'll get more time to focus on photography and sharing what I know. That change came about because the team at Heritage Expeditions have a new ship, and it's a ship that works really well for the kind of workshops that I want to run. And my relationship with that company is very strong. We've done a lot of voyages together. I've met a lot of people there and I've had a lot of great experiences. And it comes down to my time with Heritage and one particular trip in Papua New Guinea. And I got to voyage on this trip with some really great staff from the head office and talk about what kind of content would really work for them. I understood what they needed for stills and I had a good handle on that. But video was something that I'd always avoided and tried to step away from because it's a lot of extra work, it's hard to get right. It's just a whole new mindset. But on that voyage, I got to dip my toe in and find out what does work, what I can do, and where we can work together. That was a really great experience. The thing is, the only reason I ended up on that voyage, on that ship, and learning a whole bunch about video, was because another friend of mine screwed up really, really badly. I won't go into many details, but suffice to say there was a lot of drama in my life when I recommended this friend to do some video work for Heritage. Things didn't go well and things didn't end well. And at the time, he really put me in a jam. And all these years later, I have this really new exciting path going forward with my mentoring and with my tours, in part because I went through that experience where everything looked like it was not going according to plan. So at the time, I remember thinking, man, there's all this stuff that's never going to happen and we can't do this now and we can't do that and things would be better if only. At the time, I didn't realise that I was being tipped first into a way to actually make my photography better and have a lot more fun with my career, let alone to survive the pandemic. We often look for what will make us a better photographer and sometimes there are genuine reasons that you're not achieving what you think you could achieve. There could be some genuine roadblocks there. Most people, however, don't even realize what they're truly capable of. They can do a lot more than they're doing right now. They just don't realize it. That's half the battle for me, trying to show people that the camera they're holding right now 
and the possibilities that they have in their brain right now absolutely can lead to some amazing, beautiful work. Once you realize that anything is possible, the next step is just to get out there and start doing it. Maybe at first you're going to be doing it badly. I know I did, and that's okay. You keep going. It takes time to get better at something. There's also no guarantee that you will get better just because you do put in the time. There are things I put lots of time into and I just, I never got it. I never moved past a certain stage. Or maybe you will get better and your career still doesn't move forward because there's other things that are actually getting in the way. Being a photographer is not just about having talent and taking photographs. It's easy to be a photographer. Running a business, that's a whole other ball game. The one thing I do know is that if you don't just get out there and start spending more time shooting, then there's not much chance you'll be the best photographer you can be. And I know we all want to be the best photographer we can be. Okay.